emphysema emphysema is nothing but permanent enlargement of the SNI with wall destruction without significant fibrosis so there are four types of emphysema centri assignor otherwise called centri lobular pan assignor or pan lobular distal assignor or distal paraseptal and irregular emphysema out of all these things irregular emphysema is the most common overall lobular the term lobule indicates a collection of three to five assigni when compared with centri and pan pan assignor emphysema both of them cause significant obstruction, but however, centri assignor is 20 times more common than pan assignor emphysema. So this is the picture of the assignus which is involved. So this is the the this is the alveolar sac, alveolar duct, and respiratory bronchioles. Various diseases affect various parts. So this uh, the the thing marked in the red color. This is uh, caused by centri assignor emphysema, whereas the green one, it's distal assignor emphysema. The blue one, the like the entire boundary that's affected in pan assignor emphysema, whereas the scratches here and there, so it's irregular emphysema, it affects the alveoli irregularly. And uh, so the first type and the second type, the centri assignor and the and the and the pan assignor emphysema as seen over here, the first two ones. So this one, the centri assignor, is predominantly affecting the upper lobes and it is due to smoking. Now the pan assignor emphysema predominantly affects the lower lobes and is due to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And the third type, which is the distal assignor emphysema, it is affecting the upper lobes and uh, it is mainly affecting the periphery of the lungs which means it is it is going to cause bulla and when the bulla ruptures there is going to be spontaneous pneumothorax and uh, sometimes it occurs in scarring and uh, at lactasis as well and the fourth type of emphysema is the irregular one which is characterized by fibrosis and scarring and uh, there is no specific lung area which is involved but like irregularly disinvolved pathogenesis is smoking and and uh, airway through this a lot air pollutants and uh, genetic factors are there to cause the disease so alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is also here alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is mainly causing protease antiprotease imbalance all right and uh, along with oxidative stress which causes increased programmed cell death and apoptosis and senescence and inflammatory cells and mediators and imbalance between protease and antiprotease together will cause alveolar wall destruction which is the main thing behind the pathogenesis of emphysema and uh, both oxygen stress free radicals react to oxygen species or due to smoking so this stimulates inflammation as a result of inflammation, the inflammatory cells and mediators are released. Cells such as neutrophils, macrophages, CD4 and 8 plus T cells. Mediators such as leukotriene B4, interleukin 8 and TNF. And protease antiprotease balance is going to follow just after inflammation because protease is going to be released as a result of inflammatory process. So antiproteases are protective in nature, but here if the antiprotease is very less because of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, there is very less protection. On the other hand, sometimes infection will cause acute exacerbation of COPD as well. Genetic component just now we saw, alpha-1 antitrypsin, and uh, it's coded by the gene called PI, which is proteinase inhibitor. It's present on the chromosome number 14. And... Uh, there will be ra reduced radial traction of the alveoli and so functional airway obstruction is going to occur because of extracellular matrix damage which is the main pathogenesis so the key words here is radial traction and reduced elastic recoil clinical features include dyspnea which is progressive in nature and weight loss and cough and wheeze also occur especially if it is asthmatic type and the chest becomes barrel shaped and the person has a hunched back and they are called a pink puffer because oxygenation is not a problem at all. Clinical features of emphysema that occurs along with chronic bronchitis is that cyanosis will be there in addition to all the above. So the person is called a blue blotter because the person is cyanosed and he tends to gain more weight. Secondary pulmonary hypertension is kind of like a complication of it. Related diseases include compensatory obstructive overinflation, bullous emphysema, mediastinal emphysema. In mediastinal type interstitium will have air. So see you soon. Bye.